It's a late summer's night, and you and your friends are out camping by the lake. As you're laughing and joking, suddenly you hear the snap of a twig coming from just beyond the small circle of dim light your fire creates. Nervously, you laugh it off as a squirrel or other small animal, and get back to horsing around, when suddenly, one of your friends gurgles a dying breath as a machete splits his head open. Looking up, you see a seven-foot-tall figure step out of the darkness and retrieve the machete. It's him. The legends were true. Welcome to this episode of the Infographic Show, where we pit the average Joe against the legendary Jason Voorhees. Could you defeat him? Jason Voorhees was born in the small town of Crystal Lake on June 13, 1946. Afflicted with hydrocephalus, which created several facial deformities, an abnormally large head, and mental disabilities, Jason's mother, Pamela Voorhees, kept him away from other kids and took care of him alone at home. Having no other people in his life, Jason developed a deep bond with his mother, loving and revering her above anything else. In the summer of 1957, when Jason was 11 years old, Pamela was unable to get a babysitter for Jason and brought him with her to Camp Crystal Lake, where she worked as a cook. Hanging around his mother instead of the other kids, he was inevitably ostracized by the other children and eventually bullied for his disabilities. One day, as he was being bullied, Jason fled from the kids, who chased him to the end of a dock. Throwing him into the water as a joke, the kids watched helplessly as Jason began to drown while the camp counselors who were supposed to be supervising the children were having sex in the woods. Jason's body was never found, but the camp was closed as a result. Opening the next year, Jason's mother Pamela, mad with grief, murdered the counselors she blamed for Jason's drowning. Unbeknownst to Pamela, Jason had somehow survived his drowning and built a crude shelter for himself where he stayed for years alone. Jason would ultimately rediscover his mother 20 years later, but only moments before she was decapitated by a new camper acting in self-defense. Taking his mother's sweater, pants, severed head, and the machete that killed her, Jason built a shrine to his mother and began his murderous rampage. So let's say you're foolish enough to go camping in the area around Camp Crystal Lake. What can you expect to go up against? Well, first of all, be warned, because Jason and his mother both blamed his near drowning on teenage promiscuity. Any drinking or sexual acts are surefire ways to be marked for death by a vengeful Jason. So keep it in your pants and you might survive. But let's say you managed to stumble across Jason anyways. What should you be prepared for? First of all, you should be aware of Jason's superior strength. Already a hulking and imposing figure, Jason stands at nearly 7 feet tall and easily weighs over 200 pounds. But his strength is far beyond that of a normal human being, able to bend even metal pipes. Jason is also incredibly durable. Though not impervious to damage, he has shown great resiliency, even taking a machete to the head and surviving. After his accidental resurrection by a lightning bolt, though his resilience reached supernatural levels, with Jason apparently being completely impervious to any fatal damage. That's not to say that Jason can't be hurt, it's simply that killing him can be nearly impossible. The last thing to be aware of is Jason's incredible speed and stealth, seemingly able to cover vast distances in surprisingly little time. Some theorize that Jason simply has the ability to teleport to shadowed, hidden areas near his prey, as when observed physically walking, he is typically no faster than the average person, and yet routinely surprises and ambushes fleeing prey. So how can you survive an encounter with Jason? The first tip would be to remember that even though he is in fact extremely resilient, he is not invulnerable to damage. While after his resurrection by a lightning bolt, Jason seems to be immortal, it has been clearly demonstrated that Jason can be restrained for years in one location, frozen solid, or even blown up into small bits. Your first order of business will be to slow Jason down. Despite his resiliency and slow regenerative powers, Jason clearly still takes damage. With Jason's far superior strength, a melee weapon such as a club or an axe is completely out of the question. You're really just asking for a machete through the skull. You need to keep your distance, and you need to dish out some serious damage that will slow Jason down. Here is where you want to be thinking much like you would in a zombie survival scenario. But forget the headshots, which are difficult targets to hit anyways. Firearms deliver tremendous amounts of kinetic energy at very high speeds, and whether you're an undead zombie or an immortal machete-wielding mass murderer, a shattered femur is still impossible to stand on. While gut instinct may be to go for a popular shotgun, we recommend going instead for something with much more penetrative power. Your goal, after all, is to hit structurally vital bones and obliterate them. An M4 assault rifle, favored battle rifle of the US military, can deliver a 556mm round at 2970 feet per second. And with a steel penetrating core, a few shots to the leg is sure to decimate Jason's ability to support his body weight on that limb. 
But don't stop there. The backbone is extremely important structurally for an upright bipedal animal such as a human, helping support the upper body and distribute that weight evenly to the pelvis and thus the legs. Put a few rounds into Jason's backbone and shatter his backbone to watch him crumple over like a sad pancake. It's important to remember that Jason can regenerate though, so he won't stay down for long. You may be tempted to take this opportunity to run and hide, but given Jason's ability to seemingly appear from out of nowhere, this is probably not a great idea. Instead, keep Jason in full view at all times and let him crawl towards you. If he regenerates, no problem, put a few more bone shattering rounds into his vital areas and slow him down again. While you can't kill Jason, it has been shown that you can obliterate his mortal form and force him to return to hell until he reassembles his body. So what you want to do is carve Jason into pieces, but again, while staying out of reach of that terrifying machete of his. Enter the M18A1 Claymore Directional Anti-Personnel Mine, another favorite toy of the US Armed Forces. Unlike a typical mine, the Claymore is aimed at a target and fired by remote control, shooting a pattern of 700 3.2 mm steel balls at a speed of 3,995 feet a second, a maximum of 250 yards. With a detonator made out of 2.5 pounds of C4, the closer you lure Jason to your hidden claymore, the better. And you'll have to lure him, because another thing Jason has shown is that he's not dumb. So if your claymore is out in the open, forget about it. He's not falling for it. However, if you successfully lure him to within range of your hidden claymore, be sure to get him as near as possible while you stay safely out of the firing cone. You also want to be somewhat cautious about backblast, although thanks to the Mizne Chardon effect, where a sheet of explosives has its blast directed away from a heavy backing surface, such as the Claymore's rear metal plate, you shouldn't be in too much danger yourself, aside from possibly shattered eardrums. However, for Jason, being on the business end of an exploding Claymore is going to ruin his day as 700 steel balls absolutely shred his body. Jason will come back. He always does. And to be sure he doesn't regenerate right away, we recommend you spend a few hours picking up the meatball-sized pieces that are probably all that's left of Jason's body, and perhaps burning them. You can try and appease his spirit by giving his ashes a proper burial near his mother's final resting place at Camp Crystal Lake, but in all likelihood, it's probably just better if you put up a bunch of signs and get stupid teenagers to stop driving to the site of multiple mass murders to make out. So, how would you kill Jason in a one-on-one -on -one matchup? What weapon would you use? Let us know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video called You vs. 100 People, Could You Defeat Them? Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time!